So I'm at a cyclocross race here in Dade City and I wore my GoPro the first lap. I made a video a little while ago with music and it's the same course. It's, we use this venue twice during the season. And what I wanted to do today was do a voiceover. Uh, I have a lot of people ask me about cyclocross. There's a lot of people that don't know what it's like to do a race. Maybe they're interested. So I'm going to do a voiceover on this video and just kind of talk through what it's like to do a cyclocross lap, kind of what goes through your head, things that you do in the course. So here we go. So typically the way a cyclocross race will start is the race director will go in front of the group or behind them or maybe the side and say anytime in the next 10 seconds or 30 seconds go at the sound of my whistle and that will prevent you from doing a track stand or knowing exactly when he's going to start. So what I typically do is I apply pressure on both brakes, weight my left pedal because I clip in with my right and as soon as the whistle goes let up on the brakes. Press hard, do a few pedal strokes, and try to clip in as soon as I can, and then just sprint. That's why it's good to practice clipping in quickly. Getting a great start in the very front on a cyclocross race is not as crucial as some of the mountain bike races that I do where the single track comes up real quickly, so the whole race funnels into single track, and if you're not in the top three or five and you get behind someone slow, you can have a bad start and end up having a bad race. By regulation, cyclocross race courses have to be a certain width, and that allows for passing almost any time that you feel like you can on a course, which I really like. So you can see the sun over here. It's an early start. It's about 45, 47 degrees. Absolutely perfect day for cyclocross racing. Beautiful weather. Course was really dry. We're in a really dry spell right now. So coming up to the barriers here, this is where you got to unclip and run over the barriers. Only one set of barriers on this course. And I usually try to take two steps, go over the barriers, uh, and then clip back, jump back on the bike, clip in as quickly as I can. And it's important to get over these quickly, especially in the beginning of the race where you don't want to lose contact with the leaders if you're trying to ride for contention. And you want to stay on the wheel and get over those barriers quickly. You'll see those flags on the left. You saw a set there, and you see a set on the left here coming up. That's the pit. And that's where you can keep a bike, a set of wheels, or have someone give you a water bottle. Some races allow feeding, some do not. This one did, but you have to go in the pit to get a water bottle. You also have to go in the pit to get a bike or to get help on your bike uh, with service. There's a neutral service guy in there and you cannot get a bike anywhere on the course. It has to be in the pit. So what I do is I leave my gravel bike, my Niner RLT9 Steel. Not the best bike for cyclocross racing but it's a great backup i've never had to use it this season thank goodness but it's there in case i get a flat or have some kind of mechanical so you see these tight turns and then you come up these hills this is a uh, a really steep hill it's probably a little bit steeper than it looks like in the video the bike that i'm riding it's my giant tcx advanced it's a carbon frame di2 shifting and it's got a single front chain ring which is a 40 tooth cha uh, front chain ring and then 11.25 in the back, and I will use the 25 going up these hills. Now you're coming downhill, and it's pretty bumpy. This way is, is why it's really important to stay loose on a cyclocross bike. There's a little ditch right there that you couldn't really tell in the video, but you got to stay loose. If you don't, you can nail a front tire in a pothole or something. So you got to keep your arms loose. You don't want to go off your line or worse, crash. And also staying loose is really important so that you can not get fatigue. So if you're really tight, you can get a really sore back or sore arms or just cause more fatigue. Okay, coming down a hill, uh, going into this turn, there's going to be a run-up. And this is a run-up where there are no stairs, so it's all dirt. It was dry, but if it were muddy, I'd have cleats on my shoes. Now, I do not fully shoulder my bike. What I do is I put my hand under the top tube, bringing it up next to my shoulder. It looks like I'm shouldering, but I don't rest the top tube completely on my shoulders because I have wide bony shoulders and resting a top tube on my clavicle is really painful. So I will uh, pick it up and it's just as efficient, just as quick, I think. This is a section that's kind of like single track. It's still wide enough to pass, 
but the main fast line is right there in the middle. And this is where the mountain bike skills really help. And this is also why I like riding my cyclocross bike on single track because it really helps the bike handling skills and really helps you save some seconds every lap. Uh, now this section right here was really muddy earlier in the year. Like I said, this is the second time we've used this venue. That point right there, that little ditch was really full of mud and water when we had the race here earlier this year. But you know, like I said, in a dry season and uh, this course was completely dry. Riding on cyclocross courses is mainly grass. There's some dirt like you saw in some pavement. What you got to understand about riding on grass is it will feel like you're putting in a huge effort and not going very fast. But you just got to understand that's the way it is. Especially there's there can be some thick grass and you just got to understand everybody's grinding, everybody's pushing hard. And it can be demoralizing if you're not used to it, but you got to understand the grass can be slow. So this is a section that's really tight and twisty. This is where a good cyclocross race bike really helps uh, uh, cyclocross race, race bikes have kind of kind of some steep geometry, allows you to really get around these corners quickly and accelerate quickly. The carbon on the Giant TCX Advance is really stiff, but it's also compliant. It's a comfortable ride on these bumpy courses, but yet it does accelerate quickly and it is light. And going up those steep hills, which we got another one coming up, is where you really appreciate your carbon bike. So this is a section they call the toilet bowl. It's a little bit steeper down there on the left than it looked. You got to keep your momentum up so you don't fall down in that little hole. A little off camber section. Off camber sections are really typical for cyclocross courses. Now this is a hill that is pretty steep. I'm probably going to go back down to my 25 in the back and really get out of the saddle and crank up this hill. This is where you appreciate that stiff, light cyclocross bike. That investment that you made in your cross bike uh, is really pays off on these uh steep hills where you're just cranking, you want the bike to be responsive and you want it to be light. And another tight turn here. You'll see the pit on the left, there's the flags. And like I said, you have to go in there if you want any kind of service, any kind of water bottle. And there's the exit point and you gotta exit there. And you can never go backwards on a cyclocross course. So if you pass that pit five feet and you have a mechanical, you gotta go all the way around until you see another entrance. That was a double-sided pit, so there's two places on the course you can go into the pit. Now coming up here is some sand, a pretty long sand section. You'll see the guy on my left, uh, he will be on my left in a minute. He, he tried to ride it, which he did, but I ran it and I gained a little bit of ground on him. This section I found faster and more efficient to run. You can really get gassed trying to ride through some thick sand like that. I noticed yesterday, this is a Sunday race. I raced yesterday on Saturday. A lot of guys would try to ride through it. They would get bogged down in the middle and then get off their bike and run. So I just found it a lot easier just to get off my bike and run it. Also, these early morning races, if there's a lot of dew in the grass, you get a lot of water on your tires and then you hit sand and it can really cake your bike and tires in sand and get into your drivetrain. That's why even in the morning races, uh, I will run the sand. And the nice thing about cross is you can ride a few laps before your race and decide what you want to do on the various parts of the course, you know, like the sand or the mud, the best lines, how you want to do it if you want to run it or ride it. So that's going to be the complete lap. And you'll see we're about to cross the finish line where we started. And we take a left-hand turn back onto the grass for another lap. And we actually did six laps on this course. So that'll do it. For this video, uh, that's what it's like to do a cyclocross race. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.